What a lot of people don't know actually is that women were a big part of the history of technology. The first ever computer scientist was actually a woman. No. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, now the numbers look really different as you mentioned. Even the one third number is a little bit misleading because for technical roles which tend to be high paying, it's closer to 20% and as you move up to tech management, that number goes down. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why we could talk about that all day, but there aren't as many girls who are studying computer science and engineering. Uh, when I was in high school, I was the only girl in my advanced levels of physics and math for three years. And then once and if women actually do enter the industry, uh, they face more bias and are more likely to leave than men. And as you can imagine, this snowballs over time. People recruit people who look similar to themselves. It impacts the policies in the workplace. Uh, so this is why I founded Women of Startup Nation. The issue that we really focus on is the representation piece. So uh, showcasing amazing role models of women in tech. And we do that, me and now I have an amazing teammate at an Adler, by interviewing different Israeli women in tech and telling their stories. And beyond just the interviews, we do other projects to increase representation. So we created a video for girls in tech uh, to help them dispel some of the myths and inspire them to join. There is a concept called the Manal, which is an all-male panel. Uh, so we have an initiative to help more technical women be visible and speak at panels and conferences. And then, you know, now that we have a wide reach of about 19,000 followers, we partner with organizations to help them with their pipelines. I'm too. curious to ask about the access for funding and capital, because there are women founders also in Israel. What are you seeing with regards to how hedge funds or banks approach them or treat them? Yeah, so I think, um, so, so, you know, the question is about access to capital for women and, uh, you know, part of why the representation piece is important is it because it allows men and women to rethink, you know, what does an engineer or a CTO or a founder look like? Uh, in the case of founders, they don't, female founders don't get as much access to capital. Uh, there's sort of two things at play here. One is there just aren't as many female founders. It's about 10% female uh, in Israel. It's been the same for the last five years, so it hasn't improved. Uh, and then also the women who actually are starting companies are getting less money. There's uh, a gender gap on the other side of the table for venture capitalists. They, there's interesting research actually that men and women are asked different questions when they come and fundraise. Mm. And so we actually expanded Women of Startup Nation uh, last year to include an accelerator program for Give me an founders. example what sort of questions are asked by men to men and uh, to women. One that's come up in some of the interviews for Women of Startup Nation is they might be asked about family in a way that men are not asked about, which is, you know, a biased question. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And so. OK, yeah. I want to I move on because I want to talk about the role that technology can perhaps play in the gender equality. Um, there's AI in play. There's, uh, uh, you know, algorithms, et cetera. Um, what do you think the role of tech can be as something that could pave the way. It's a complicated question because on the one hand, technology has created amazing opportunity. So some examples that come to mind are women around the world now have uh, better access to education, to financial institutions. One of my friends is working on virtual reality for empathy across different groups, which mm. is really interesting. So there is a lot of impact that technology can have. However, uh, the technology we build is you know as good as the teams that build it and the data we use. It's a so, reflection, maybe. Yeah, so I, I'm a data scientist by background. I can talk a bit about AI, but, um, you know, for example, one of the big tech companies used an internal AI recruiting tool based on 10 years of historical male data. And then um, what happened was new resumes were penalized whenever they had the word women's in it. Mm. And, uh, you know, Google Translate for a while would translate, uh, you know, babysitter to sh she is a babysitter and doctor to he is a doctor. Wow. And so what's really important is even though there's tremendous, tremendous opportunity, uh, you know, we've learned from the past and we can be smarter about the teams and the data that goes into building smart products.